Imagine being homeless as a kid and leading your state in rushing yards, but you don't have a single FBS college football offer. At one point, Josh Jacobs was never a hot commodity and it looked like him and his family would be stuck in the vicious cycle of poverty forever. But one decision changed Josh's life as he eventually blew up, went to Alabama, became the number one running back in his draft class, and is now one of the best backs in the NFL. So how on earth did Josh go from sleeping in a car with no collegiate offers after his senior year to a young NFL superstar with the Oakland Raiders? Well, today we'll tell the entire Josh Jacobs story and how all of this happened. But you will definitely have to stay until the end to find out. But first, if you love football, be sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload, give the video a like, share it with your friends, drop a comment, and stay until the end. This will all help the video get in the algorithm, which means my channel will do better and I can bring you guys more videos. Let me know who I should do next down in the comment section as well, and let's get started and tell the inspiring story of Josh Jacobs. Let's start out with a quote. Everything will work out if you do things the right way and persevere. That was a quote by Josh Jacobs' father. But when you grow up in a rough part of Tulsa, Oklahoma living in a car, and some of your friends are in jail, it may be difficult to think things will work out in your favor. When Jacobs was in fourth grade, his parents split up, and he went to live with his father. While his father's new apartment was being made ready, they slept on relatives' couches, and eventually his father's suburban. Jacobs would shower after football practice, and his father would drive around looking for a spot to park the car for the night, always sleeping with a gun on his chest to protect his family. Jacobs said, quote, We slept in that suburban every night for maybe two weeks until the apartment was finally ready, Jacobs writes. We moved in, and a couple of months later, my dad won custody of my three brothers and my sister, and they moved in with us too. Then, my dad lost his job. His dad lost his job when he got in an accident at work. For the next two years, Jacobs and his father and siblings went from motel to motel, living under their backpacks, and mainly eating white rice and ramen noodles and the hotel's breakfast. And sometimes food was very scarce at night, and Josh remembers his father not eating most nights. Despite his dad's frustration and his family's desperation, he never turned to drug dealing, which would have been an easy way to make money. He said he wanted to do things the right way, and there was no shortcuts for the Jacobs family, and he wanted to be a good role model for his kids. Jacob took all his anger out on the football field. He put up absolutely absurd numbers. So absurd that in fact, the local newspaper refused to print them because they believed his coach was making the numbers up. During his senior year, Jacobs still had zero scholarship offers and zero stars on every recruiting website. Even after he put up 455 yards and six touchdowns on just 22 carries in a game by the local newspaper, he still received very little interest. Even the schools that did show interest in him did so on their own terms. TCU wanted him as a cornerback, and when Jacobs expressed his desire to stay on offense, the assistant coach told him there were a thousand players we could recruit that are just like you. I bet that boiled Jacobs' blood to a new degree, but he would finally catch a break, and it was a decision that would change his life. He joined Twitter. He posted his highlight reels on there, and coaches started to see it. Missouri was the first Power 5 school to offer, then soon Oklahoma offered, and then Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide came knocking. All these scouts said they watched the film, were super impressed, and then restarted it again because they couldn't believe what they were seeing and how this kid wasn't being recruited. Eventually on signing day, he ended up committing to Alabama. Everybody knows Alabama for being a football factory, Jacob said, for putting dudes in the NFL left and right, but I didn't look at it that way. I saw it as an opportunity to play against the most elite competition in college football and to get a quality education at the same time. As I said earlier, he ended up choosing Alabama over Missouri. Oh man. I got my three stars when Alabama offered, Jacob said, but before then, I didn't have any stars. According to 24-7 Sports, he was a three-star recruit, the number 11 all-purpose back, and the 469th overall recruit in the class of 2016. Somehow, he had made it, but he was a long way from ever making it to the NFL, and the odds looked very slim. When he arrived at Alabama, Josh Jacobs spent his first few months sleeping on the floor in his dorm room. Not because he didn't have a bed, but because after years of sleeping on couches, motel floors, and in the backseat of his father's Chevy, he was more comfortable there. In terms of the football reality he faced, he was a three-star running back coming out of a little-known high school, joining an assembly line of five-star players at college football's Mecca. At one point, the number one running back from both the 2015 and 2017 classes in Damian Harris and Najee Harris were on the roster, and they had another guy named Bo Scarborough. How on earth was he ever supposed to play? Well, as a freshman at Alabama in 2016, he actually did see the field as he split time with Damian Harris and Bo Scarborough. He rushed the ball 85 times for 567 yards and four touchdowns. Jacobs had injured his hamstring before the start of the 2017 season. It was a very frustrating year as he didn't play a whole lot and he was always in pain. 
as a sophomore in 2017, he ended up going for 284 yards on 46 carries with only one touchdown. After the season, it was revealed that he had been playing with a broken ankle for most of the year. He almost left Alabama after the year, but his dad convinced him to stay and said his hard work would pay off, and as the Jacobs family knows best, they didn't quit. It would pay off for him as he ran the ball for 640 yards and 11 touchdowns while being named the SEC Championship Game MVP. He ended up catching 20 passes for 247 yards and 3 touchdowns as well, and he was also a factor on special teams, and there was nothing this kid couldn't do, and he ran with a purpose. After that, he decided to forego his senior year and declare for the 2019 NFL Draft. He was the number one running back prospect in the draft and was expected to be a first round pick. The Oakland Raiders selected Jacobs in the first round with the 24th overall pick. In fun fact, he actually came with one of the picks that was acquired from the Chicago Bears in the Khalil Mack trade. With Marshawn Lynch leaving, Josh was now expected to be the starting running back for the Raiders. Jacobs made his NFL debut in week one against the Broncos on Monday Night Football, and in that game, he showed his potential as he rushed 23 times for 85 yards and two touchdowns, and also caught a pass for 28 yards in a 24-16 victory. Three weeks later against the Bears in London, he rushed the ball 26 times for 123 yards and two touchdowns. Against the Lions, he rushed the ball 28 times for 120 yards and two touchdowns. After just the eighth game of the year, Jacobs had already set the Raiders' rookie record for rushing yards in a season with 740, surpassing Marcus Allen's old record of 697. In Week 13 against the Chiefs, he rushed the ball 17 times for 104 yards, and during that game, he became the first running back in Raiders history to rush for over 1,000 yards in his rookie season. He would end up missing three of his last four games due to a shoulder injury and some sort of weird skin infection, but he was an absolute star. He finished his campaign with 1,150 yards and seven touchdowns, and he lived up to all the hype and then some as a rookie, and he looked like a player who was going to be good for years to come. He said, quote, I run for my pops, the man who sacrificed so much and worked so hard to provide for me and educate me. I run for my three-year-old son, Braxton, so he can have a father he's proud of like I'm proud of mine. I run for my sister and my three brothers. I run for my teammates and my coaches. I run for everybody who has supported me, anyone who's ever doubted me, and for anyone who's living on white rice and ramen noodles. I run for anyone who's in a tough situation and feels like it's never going to end, and that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Going into 2020, he made his return against the Carolina Panthers, and in that game he rushed for 93 yards and 3 touchdowns in one of his best games ever as the newly founded Las Vegas Raiders won 34-30. In the following week against the Saints on Monday Night Football, he recorded 88 rushing yards and 17 receiving yards, and they won the game again. In Week 5 against the Chiefs, he rushed the ball for 77 yards and two touchdowns in their win, and right now the Raiders look like they can potentially be a playoff team, and Jacobs is one of the best backs in the league. I honestly expect Josh to be one of the better running backs in the NFL for a long time, and his story is truly amazing. He went from living in a car, tearing up the state of Oklahoma in rushing yards but getting no offers, blowing up because of Twitter, going into Alabama with little odds of ever actually playing, fighting through injury, and becoming one of the best players on the team, to then somehow becoming the number one running back in his class, getting taken in the first round, and becoming the best rookie running back in Raiders history, and now we are here today where he's a young star. The odds were truly stacked against him, but Jacobs made it work, and I'm really happy for his family, because I can't imagine going through what he went through as a kid. What do you guys think of Jacobs' story? I know you guys have probably heard it before, but I wanted to tell it to you guys today, and I wanted to give my own take on it. Also, if you know another NFL player, or even a college football player with an inspiring story, be sure to let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, share it with your friends, comment your thoughts, subscribe to the channel if you love football, and check out all my other videos. But until then, peace.